Gas training, testing a thermistor on a boiler. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video we've got his friendly Ideal Boilers service engineer back and he's going to show us how to test thermistors in, in a boiler. What he's going to do to start with, he's going to have a little talk about thermistors and then he's going to, and then he's going to um, test them with multimeter, show you how to test them show you how um, putting clamps on with temperature probes and stuff like that. So it's a really, really interesting video. Um, yeah, if you've got any videos that you want to send in, if you can send them in on landscape like that, if possible. So when you video like that and it just makes the editing better and I will have my WhatsApp details below for them. Also, if you want to send a review or if you want to promote your business or anything like that, if you're a gas engineer or a plumber, if you do good work, then get in touch. I'm happy to help you. Um, I've done some videos with some other people and they managed to get quite a bit of work from doing the videos. So anything we can do really to promote good work in industry. If we promote good work, then obviously the people that are watching this channel as well will see that work. And then hopefully they will also then try and do a better job as well. And I'm not saying I'm no, you know, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. But what I am saying is that I'm always trying every day to be better than what I was yesterday. Um, so yeah. Anyway, let's get over to Ideal, the Ideal Boilers engineer, and look at these for misters. And please, if you could, please put a thumbs up on the video and also add a comment below. Thank you. Hello YouTube, I'm back with another video uh, and today we're going to talk about Thermistors or the proper name which is a thermostat resistor or even an NTC sensor uh, which is a, which means negative temperature coefficient which, which again means that the measurements or the readings move in opposite directions as the temperature within the heated circuit rises, the resistance within the thermistor itself decreases and the circuit board will see a drop in voltage. That's 99% uh, of how thermistors work. There are, well, they well, maybe there used to be PTC thermistors, which is positive temperature coefficient, which obviously the readings move in the, the the same direction. Negative temperature is the one that I think almost all manufacturers use nowadays and uh, I mean I could be wrong but I don't think anyone uses PTC anymore so they're basically just an instrument to measure the temperature and relay that information to the circuit board. Now you can get faults with thermistors. Um, they, they can be out of calibration normally at the high or the low end of the thermistor and the fault would generally you know show up as a, a temperature problem within your boiler either you know the boilers running at a minimum fire at a low temperature or um, it may not even fire at all it could be holding it off if the, the thermistor is completely gone um, and the circuit board is looking for the thermistor before it fires and if it can't see it it'll just hold off ignition so um, that's another a problem uh, that you can have with thermistors generally they're quite reliable but uh, I'm going to show you today how you would test and check a thermistor again on my boiler at home the ideal logic we have a return thermistor and we have a flow thermistor back there that flow thermistor is not just a flow for mister. It was originally used as a no flow for mister, which we use as our um, pump proving switch or differential pressure switch. We don't have uh, a switch a lot like the valence and what have you. They have a, a pressure switch that detects the pump moving. That's our flow for mister. That one there. What we do with that, we give the boiler about 10 seconds to detect the movement in temperature. From that thermistor, if it doesn't detect it, it'll shut the boiler down, and that just proves that our pump is running. It's also an overheat thermistor, which will cut off the boiler around, I think, about 105 degrees. But generally, 
all Themisters, no matter what manufacturer, it could be Worcester, Valent, Beesman, Baxley, I think the the measurements, the readings, the conversion table are all around about 10 kilo ohms at 25 degrees. I could be wrong. Uh, other manufacturers may have slight variations in their conversion, but and it's probably worth checking before you, you do this, but uh, I'm quite positive that all Formistas work on the same um, conversion table. So what I'll do, I will set up my um, testing area and we'll crack on and I'll show you what to do. Right, I'm set up now. Um, what I've done, um, I've put a, my temperature clamp from my analyzer I've got my analyzer set to temperature. As you can see there, it's reading 46 degrees on my return pipe. And my temperature clamp is literally clamped right next to my return for Mister. You can't really see that very well, but you've got to get your temperature clamp as close as possible to your for Mister you're testing. Um, it's almost literally next to it. And I have my Multimeter set to ohms because we're testing the resistance through the thermistor and as you can see there My multimeter is registering 3.8 kilo ohms now all thermistors are measured in kilo ohms If you're getting a reading of let's say 100 ohms or mega ohms Your thermistor is gone so straight away if you look for the K if you haven't got the K there, maybe you've not got a good connection on your Formista, or your Formista's just out of calibration. If it's saying anything, anything else other than K, your Formista's probably had it. We're reading 3.8 kilo ohms there. So what I would then do, I would refer, refer to my Formista chart. And if we look there, it's not going to be exact, but um, 3.7 to 3.8 is roughly between 49 and 48 degrees. We got 46, so it's within the range. You've got a you've got about a 10% um, range, so you're, from, you're not going to get the exact reading, whatever that says on your chart, to read what your multimeter is reading. And how you would test this, you would kill the power to the boiler, you would make sure it's dead, do your isolation tests, you would find the connection off the PCB board and disconnect the connection off the PCB board. However, and then you put your multimeter connections in there. However, for this purpose, I have made up my own test lead just to make it a bit simpler because it's hard for me to hold my probes um, onto that connection there and hold the camera at the same time so I mean this is probably a good thing to show you actually um, what I've done when I've changed wiring harnesses I'll just my leads are in the little terminal block there what I've done I'll pull them out and I'll pull off this lead what I've done in the past, if I've changed wiring harnesses on boilers and um, you know because they were faulty, I've snipped off the Formista leads. So as you can see there, the yellow one with the black, that's for a wet pocket Formista. That's for a, a clamp on dry Formista. That's also for the old ISARs. What I've done, I've just put them in a sleeve and connected them to um, a bit of terminal block. And I've clamped down the terminal block just enough so that my leads will actually hold in there. But normally what you would do, you would test it here. You'd put your, 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 your probes within these connections. Because not only are you testing the Formista, you're also testing the wiring harness as well. Because you may not have a problem with the Formista. You may have a problem with your harness. So the best way to test the Formista is to do it via this harness. Disconnect it from the circuit board put your probes inside 
these connections and the black and pink and the black and red correlate to the black and red is the return for mister the black and pink is the uh, red for mister so that's how you check a for mister you've got to be within a 10% range roughly if you're not then it's probably worth swapping over to mister um, whilst I'm talking about this lead that I've made I probably should mention um, this wasn't my idea this is not my baby I actually saw this on another YouTube channel um, the name's Heating Geek he's a really good diagnostic engineer um, I watched one of his videos and he did something very similar to this in his video and I just thought to myself that's genius so if you wanted just to test the thermistor quickly rather than open up the circuit board disconnecting the cables if you just wanted a quick measurement rather than opening all this if you if you take if you're changing a boiler if uh, if you're taking an old boiler out you can snip off the thermistor cables it's well worth doing if you if you test boilers a lot so he can give me that idea and if you're not subscribed to his channel it's probably a good idea that you are because he gives out very good uh, information and he's very knowledgeable uh, so yeah I mean that's it really that's how you test it for mister it's as simple as that and uh, I hope it helps until the next one sayonara this is a little bonus tip for you after that little tip I gave you with the for mister lead I thought I'd share this before I go um, I think we've all been in a situation where we've come to do our combustion analysis, analysis on our boiler. The flue is sideways on, the boiler's in a cupboard or against the wall and you just there's no way at all you can get your probe into that flue there just because it's too long. Other than having one of the small uh, little probes, you're going to come up against a little problem. I've devised a little way to get around this and I thought I'd share it with you. Uh, so what I would do, I would remove this test plug here, pop it down there and I've made myself a little adapter. Basically all it is, it, it's the same as one of these, I've put a hole in it and I have used the test point of an ideal ISA. Like I said, old boilers can come in handy. You can get little little gadgets off them. What I'll do then is I would screw that onto the elbow there. So now we've got a little test point. Get myself a little bit of silicon tube from air pressure switches. Put that on the end. And then, voila put the other end onto my probe what I've done there I've just increased the size of the tube with a bit of gauge tube so now from there all the way around to there we can now take a reading from our flu sampling point that's just another little tip two in one today now this time I really am going once again, thank you very much to the Ideal Boilers engineer. Thank you for the time and effort that you're putting in to try and help on this channel. It's um, really, really appreciated. And thank you to everybody who's watched. Please put a comment below. Please put a thumbs up. Really grateful for a thumbs up. It really helps with the videos. And yeah, if you've got any suggestions, please put them in comments below as well. And as I said at the start of the video, if you want me to come come out to one of your jobs or if you want to promote your business or anything like that then get in touch I don't want pain for to do this so um, I want to try and help I want to try and raise the standards in the industry I think the industry is is lacking and, and I want to try and break standards and, and I believe that if we show good work then um, we can raise the standards and it's not about shiny pipes either so for me polishing pipes is you know that's not that that's not what it's about it's what's inside the pipes that matter so flushing the system and um, setting the boilers up correctly installing flues correctly um, just all generally um, just installing the boilers well and I, and I believe that if we install boilers better 
then bollards will last longer and also the customers will then still have warranty so the manufacturers cannot get out of warranty so things like checking with the checking with any pro check afterwards things like that and taking pictures videoing what you've done so you can prove that when you installed it you installed it correctly and yeah as i say it's just all about trying if possible help rate standards you know as, as much as we can um help some of the new people into the industry or even people that's been doing it some people's been doing it 5 10 15 years i mean i, I had somebody the other day he'd been a gas engineer for 20 years and he messaged me and just thanked me for all the time and effort that i've put into doing these videos he said it's really helped him and, and, and i think that as, as an industry a lot of us work by yourself and it's quite a lonely place when you work by yourself um so yeah I, you know let, let's build this community let's help each other help the charity as well also you know we made that i've got nothing to hide you know i want to build this channel so i want it to help me as well but i want it to help me i want it to help you i want it to help the charity and i just want it to be a um just a good thing that we're doing really so yeah and, I, and i'm definitely babbling on now um Thanks very much, thanks for watching.